pay this instantly, have to adapt this instantly to the uh, health insurance company. A 15.5% sounds less or few uh, compared to the flat tax that you are talking about. But 15.5% means compared with 365 days a year that uh, 54 days a year you can only work for your health insurance company, which is two months, and no one realizes this in Germany. I like this argument when I speak to my fellow citizens that every one of those work two months only for their health insurance. And at this point, I'd like to make four, um, four interim remarks. The first is uh, we should look at the term health insurance company. company. The second is uh, we should make clear what it means that the company claims to be responsible for the health of people. And the third is that we have uh, to be aware it is not a true insurance system. And at last, uh, four, uh, we have to see that these round about 250 German uh, health insurance companies are somewhat remote controlled as financial units by another new giant administrative unit called Health Fund, which was founded uh, and uh, began to work in January 2009. First, uh, a health insurance company in Germany is not a company in the sense of free and private company or corporation. It is nothing else but an administrative body. Um, it has supreme powers over its members and the right to issue administrative acts. Uh, in case a principal decides not to deduct 15.5% from the wage and pay directly to the uh, institution, he will suffer punishment according to criminal law. Even if his employee agrees not this sum to be paid, and the punishment uh, laid down for this crime is uh, the same like the punishment laid down for the cooperation of women uh, under the use of arms, uh, which is uh, quite harsh. Uh, I see we, we do not have to ask for the first time in history why a system that is so grandiose and perfect needs criminal law to force people into it. <laughs> So you see, this system is deadly serious about really collecting in all the money from its uh, members. The second is, um, the system is responsible for the health of its insurers. And this is not only euphemistic, but it, uh, it's again uh, deadly serious. Um, in the first section of this fifth social law book, we read uh, that an insurer is, I quote, Jointly responsible for his own health. Jointly responsible. This means, in argumentative contrario, uh, some of you have uh, already observed today that I love to use uh, Latin words. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, that means uh, that you are not longer responsible for your own body, but uh, others are together with you. And, uh, this has complete consequences that I will come to. Uh, my third interim remark is uh, that uh, it is not a serious health insurance system. It is not calculated according to the actuarial theory. The risk of getting sick is not set into relation to uh, the premium you pay into it, but the premium is only set into relation to the uh, to your income bracket. This again simulates that cooler people are not um, facing a lot of um, hazards to their health, uh, whereas the children with higher incomes seem to be uh, bad risks. Uh, and you do not have to be a specialist in the art of actuarial theory to, to find that this uh, gives a funny bunch of uh, stimulus to, to all these uh, uh, compulsive amendments. Um, and this again is uh, maybe the hour of birth uh, of uh, the war on corruption that eats up so much uh, resources of the system. Uh, as I said, this is my fourth interim remark, um, the last uh, administrative masterpiece, masterpiece of German health policy is the so-called health crime. My wife said, if you talk about the masterpiece, 
make sure that you say masterpiece, but you don't mean masterpiece. Uh, uh, so now I've made it clear, I hope. Um, imagine that all these 250 insurance companies collecting uh, the contributions from their compulsory insurance. And they collect it in, but they do not keep it for themselves, but they have to pass it on to this general health fund. And um, this general health fund, uh, this is not a nightmare, but it's really law in Germany. Um, this health fund gives all this money back to the 250 insurance companies. Uh, and, um, after having calculated a certain quota, Allocations that guarantee social justice coming into being. Um, I suppose there's a lot of very specialized experts traveling around Germany all the time and doing a lot of a lot of meetings throughout the country uh, to find the right mathematical formula for the real social justice cash flow. Uh, and I also think that they are having great fun doing this. However, a system such as this speaks, as I said, of public health. Uh, and you have to be very careful with these words, public health, uh, because it creates, and this is my thesis, it creates something else that private sickness. Public health creates private sickness. It sets back the individual to the loneliness of his own body. And if individual falls back into the undeniable fact that physical pain and grief are strictly personal occurrences. And this is an intellectual misconception, I think, um, that leads uh, inevitably to Only I and you as individuals have bodies, and so we have to face the fact that the public has no body. You can't shake hands with the, with the public, and you can't look into the eyes of the public, and the public cannot even catch a cold. Only you, as a human being, as an individual, can. And it's as easy as this. And uh, if you make a policy for public health, you can't make good policy for individual health at the same time, because you only can spend your money once. All these public health have simply got on the wrong track, I think. And it's um, the German uh, health system that gives a very illustrative example of things happening here. Um, let me even be more concrete to show you, or uh, to describe you the way that the German system searches and finds the adequate therapy for a uh, sick and suffering individual. So, since you are not asked, basically, if you want to take part in this insurance system, again, you are not asked. It sounds a bit like in the church here. Uh, you don't want to stay home with us. Um, now, you are not asked if you want to take part. Since you are not asked if you want to take part in general, you are not asked uh, what kind of therapy you want to uh, be treated with. Uh, the system gives this answer. Private 
ideas uh, it's constituted constituted again as an administrative body and uh, it's a public law with sovereign rights that you can relate to every single other um, just the same as the patient is uh, under the law of his insurance company and both neither the patient or the doctor are asked what they want to do the system tells them instead of a uh, private agreement um, the patient so does not get what he wants and he gets what the experts the specialists tell him uh, and they tell him what is necessary and this is the key word of the whole system the necessity the necessity of a treatment is defined by three components the first is the treatment has to be economically efficient secondly it has to be adequate and first it has to be expedient these are the three constituent facts that are included in necessary treatment. Unfortunately, these components, uh, which might lead to the good treatment, are defined objectively, uh, or to use another word, uh, they are defined disinterested. Because you are not asked. Uh, that means um, that you might be interested to spend more money into another treatment, but you don't get it. The system does not have it. Um, so the treatment is uh, maybe subjectively inadequate for you. Uh, sorry, that's the fact. Uh, the system cannot uh, regard your expert as going to your own body. Uh, keep in mind that all the insurers want to have a natural treatment. Uh, if you're not the only one in this world, you have to be part of social justice. Well, the first sexual, the first book tells you. And even if you have paid thousands and thousands of euros into the system, uh, that, that doesn't keep you away from uh, getting the really necessary treatment. Sorry, yes. Um, all these theoretical thoughts are put together and realized by sheer unimaginable bureaucratic force. Uh, between every single medical doctor and every single patient, we find uh, kind of I'd like to say a modern dome of bureaucracy. Uh, it's um, public servants doing their jobs, uh, their indefatigable jobs, and being paid, of course, from the public's purse. Uh, and uh, they think that from the systems come from the numbers. Once a patient gets sick, it is uh, not the doctor that is private, uh, the therapy, it's the employee of a social insurance company who does. But uh, unfortunately, the employee uh, has never studied medicine. He doesn't know how this works, so he needs help. And he has to obtain specialist advice and to make sure that he can find this advice. Uh, the legislature has created another administrative body called the Medical Service of Health Insurance Institutions. Um, it's like this highly specialized government body, a kind of subdivision. Uh, you find like medical doctors who have the status of public officials. And these public officials uh, rule your treatment as individuals, uh, but they never see you. They never get into contact with your body. They don't even read your bulletins. And they claim that they read these bulletins very precisely. Uh, me, as a lawyer, they have never seen you, but they decide by reading bulletins what your body is being treated. And they adjust your case with standards that are given by another, even higher specialized government body, the advisory committee of common interests within the health system. Let me repeat this just to make sure. The advisory committee of common interests. So you know the Russian word for commission of experts? Soviet, yes. Soviet is the Russian word for all of the, the, that kind. Um, in those cases, when not even this advisory committee knows what's wrong and what's right, they can ask another administrative body, which uh, I just tend to exaggerate. Uh, and this is called the Institute of Quality and Good Efficiency inside of the health system. <laughs> Institute of Quality and Good Efficiency inside the health system. And these people who come to you remember, or public law, then one day found out that public law is somewhat very 
allowed to do something. And so to be more flexible, they had an idea that they wrote into their law, into the fifth law, that uh, this uh, institute uh, can have a foundation that is not a private law, that is founded for themselves, the same God. That is a bit what we should think about doing something else like this. And uh, all this helps to carry out the work that has to be done. And uh, this foundation, again, has the right, just as the minister of the social health in Germany, to, uh, to entrust another external specialist with his expert opinion in writing. He's been paid for this. 15.5%. Remember, of millions and millions of people pay into it. And for we have a, a guarantee of access to the courts, uh, our courts, up to the constitutional court, have their own opinions on this system. And uh, maybe when we meet again, we can give you another lecture on, on what the constitutional courts in Germany think about this system. This is really great. Have fun. We learned that have fun. I can tell you, you will have fun. <laughs> and if you ask a politician about uh, the rationality of these things, uh, you will tell you. Uh, and, and, and this is very expensive. Yes, I think the uh, politician will tell you, uh, isn't health something invaluable? So, uh, I come to my final remarks in the end. We find. Uh, theoretical, very difficult situation. When the whole system was invented, it's a much more of the end 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 of Situation. Uh, what has come out is uh, an unclear fundamental principle right against public health insurances, uh, which only says you can get what is necessary, but nobody can tell you what is necessary. The contents of these rights are indefinite, uncertain, and completely indeterminate. If you, as a patient, have no means to pay the treatment yourself, and the system doesn't give it to you, you only have one chance. You can get out and bag for the right treatment, like the poorest of the poor at the end of the 19th century in Germany. Isn't that funny? And remember, again, in a legal, theoretical sense, um, clemency, grace, and mercy are not inside the legal system, but clemency always is illegal. Bear this in mind. And if a public servant comes out and says, My rules do not allow me to give you a certain treatment, but I will give it to you for reasons of mercy to act illegally. Um, so the whole speaking of social justice inside the public health system has become first nothing but a camouflage term for medical unsteadiness and uncertainty. Second, a self-service system for those who enrich themselves by pretending to be able to purposely keep high of their absolute standards, treatment standards, and third, as well as a method of political ruling in post-religious modern times. Uh, right in the middle of your audience, each of you, there's an organ called the spleen. Um, and I think all who are aware of he must have had a certain idea when he invented, invented this tomb for our bodies. Um, because if you get hurt and you lose your spleen, you do not have to die for 